Welcome back to ERD-131, Graphic Design 1, to EX-10, or at least your revisions of EX-9 working into EX-10, and adding some of your graphic accents or embellishments to your logos that you're working on. And again, the whole idea of these graphic elements is that they complement your text-based logo. You still wanted a strong text-based logo, but you want some graphics to possibly accent it. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. You don't have to draw a big picture or have a lot of things going on. And even if your text has some changes to it, you may not have to do much. Matter of fact, this example that I, I'm going to show you right now probably doesn't even need that little roof on. Uh, it's probably enough, just the Jeff Alt probably looks fine on its own. And, and, you know, I'm not crazy about it, but we'll just kind of show you some things with it. I just want to show you how to alter text. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one and then just drag copy. And I'm going to change the font. I'm just going to use a sans serif. I'm going to use Source Sans because I know that has a nice family. I'm going to use Source Sans Pro. And I like it has the little L that comes down, the little T that comes down, that kind of uh, you know, curls. And I, I extended that and made it move over. Now you can make them go straight over, you can curl them up, whatever you want to do. And uh, I made them go up, maybe I'll have them go straight. And it, it is tracked tightly already, so I'm not going to track it anymore. So I'm going to kind of leave it like that. And remember, if you're going to do the roofing exteriors, uh, since this is a sans serif, I'm going to actually use a sans serif as well from the same family. Similar to what I did up here with Roboto. I used a Roboto Heavy and a Roboto Medium. And down here with Roofing Exteriors, I'm going to use Source Sans Pro. And I don't think they have a condensed. And let's zoom in here as we're working on this. We still have to get the Jeff part in here. But I don't think they have a condensed in here. But they do have a big family. They have extra light all the way through heavy. And I'm not going to do extra light. Matter of fact, I might do semi-bold. Again, for the same reason is that the smaller you get it, the more bold they are, they're going to run together. So you might spread them out a little bit. So, And plus, I don't want it too light because this is small. So that's the only reason I'm not going with a real light font. You know, normally I might say, oh, let's go extra light. But you could see, you know, it looks nice now. But you zoom back and it, it could practically disappear. That's real light. If it was just one word, I could make it bigger. It wouldn't be an issue. So I'm going to go in here and just use, well, let's try light. No, I still don't like light. I'm, I'll make it regular for now and see how that works. And now on this one, I have it the width of the whole word, so it's even smaller. I think that's why I ended up doing that. And I do have it spread out, the tracking spread out a little because of that reason, because I went bold. So let, let me go semi-bold and see how that looks. Now you could scrunch it a little bit. And I'll zoom in here so I could see it better. And maybe I'll even scrunch it more. Now I could hit auto-auto so that the text box goes to the end. And I'll just scrunch it so it's a little more condensed. Uh, that's okay. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now I still have to get a Jeff in here. And I'll worry about that later. And first thing I just wanted to mention, in case you ever made like a little roof thing. Now I did it with a pen tool. But you could just do this. You could just go here and make a very thin rectangle. And that's it. And then click on it with the pointer, and you could rotate it using this thing. There's a little bar here. Or you can actually put numbers in over here to rotate it, like if you wanted to go up, like you knew you wanted exactly 20 degrees or 30 degrees or something. Sometimes that's what roofs are on 30 degrees. Maybe you want to do it 30 degrees. And then you have this, and you want to make another one, like a mirror image of one. You can copy this, and I'll just hold Option and drag it. And then you could flip it. They have a flip tool up here. This is the horizontal flip. And then you could just kind of align these nicely. You can highlight both of them. Make sure you don't highlight anything else. And then you don't want to align them on center because they'll do that. But if you align their tops, it'll put the tops of them the same. And then you could even, uh, you know, you could group them or you can actually unite them. Right now, I think I'm just going to group them. If you need to group something, just use this. And now they move as one. And if you want to be able to identify it, you could go in here where it says group and just call it roof thing or something. <laughs> call it roof thing. I'm not sure what it is now, but now we have a little roof thing and you can scale it. Now, I think the only problem with grouping is that it doesn't allow you to change the color to the entire group. It doesn't give you color settings here. So that's the only benefit of kind of doing a compound like a union here. It's easier to change colors. Now you could still go in here, but you'd have to change one at a time, which would be kind of a pain. So, you know, you might, you might want to go here and maybe ungroup it and then use this unite because remember that even the first unite that you do 
which is the union, is undoable. It becomes a compound shape. But because it's a compound shape, you can go in here and change the color. They do have the color setting. So if you wanted to go in here and I'll, I'll put in use, maybe I'll, I'll try that beigey color and do something like that. You know, may, maybe this would work. Maybe, you know, you're repeating the A thing. Maybe something like that would work. Maybe you're going to make the E letter bigger, whatever. Maybe Jeff is going to go up here in the roof. Maybe you're going to take the word Jeff and I'll copy this down here. And I don't want it in a slab serif. I'll just put it in the source sans pro i'm not sure what weight yet and probably not heavy i might go a little lighter whatever this one is i think semi bold i might do something like that and i'm not sure i'd where i'd put it but you know it, you could do something like this up here it fits in that little roof section or it could go down here as long as you could still read it as as jeff because the ascender of the t is less than the l that l is real high there now one of the things i wanted to mention here that i was doing on the other one now i'll just leave my jeff up here for now. Not that that's where I necessarily want to keep it, but if you wanted to do something like extend the A down, like I did over here, you see what I did? I pulled that A down. Uh, how could you do that? Well, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to convert it into a path. Convert to path. See that? Convert to path. And I'll convert it to a path and it's actually a path. It's no longer a font, so you can't change the style or anything like that. So I'm just going to drag this down. Now, these are anchor points in there, so if you go in again and use your sub-select tool, you'll see anchor points. Now, I'll zoom in. Now, be careful. Just like that one I was drawing, there could be a lot of hidden anchor points. I'm not sure why. I haven't seen that with other fonts, but the Google fonts a lot of times has anchor points on top of anchor points. But what you could try is just highlighting these, these two anchor points. You see they're blue now. They're highlighted. And just drag them down and try to keep it you know, somewhat straight. And what you can do there is now I created a little nook for this roofing and exterior. Now, you could have done something with the J or anything, you know, if you had Jeff in front of it, you could have done that, but now I created a little nook here, and I'll go back to my pointer, and I'll bring this in here a little bit, and now I have a little nook to fit that in there. Now, I'm not sure how far I want this, maybe I want this extended a little bit. Uh, now, I can't adjust the tracking anymore, because it's it's now a shape, but I, I can just stretch it out a little bit if I want to. I could do something like that. And I could also make these things connect. Now, how would I do that? Well, let me zoom in here and I'll show you. If I want these to connect into there. Now, you could just draw a box over top of them. That's another option. Because sometimes working with these anchor points can be problematic. And I'll show you what I mean. You see, if I grab this, let's see if that works. I'm going to grab it. Now, you could grab it and try to do it straight. I'm just going to continue the path and drag it up there. Now let me grab this one and now you see what's happening there? There's like a whole bunch. So I'm going to zoom in more. Now this isn't necessarily normal but now there's like an extra anchor point. But you can delete that one. You can delete that one and you have another one here. I can even go here. You can see there's like a lot of extra points here and you could just kind of Drag it and see what happens. And if it does that, just delete it because it's not really doing anything. Now that one is because now it's changing the whole line. So I'm going to leave that there. And maybe I could even delete this. And if you need more of a curve here, and I'll zoom in even more so you can see what's going on here. There's like these little handles on here. There's not a handle on this side because it's showing up as a straight joint. Select this point and then make it a mirror point. Then you have a little anchor point coming out here. Now it's affecting both sides, so you could make it disconnected, so that way it only lets you drag one side out. And I see I have an extra point here again, which is driving me crazy, but I told you that some of this, let me hit delete, hit delete, all right, now we're back again. Now you're like, oh my God, what's going on with this? Now I could just drag this down and I'll zoom out so you can see what's going on here. And I could fix that. It's just these fonts sometimes have just way too many anchor points in here. But you have flexibility though to go in and adjust these if you just kind of get used to figure out what's going on with these. Now this one down here, that one was fine. I didn't have a problem there. So let's see what happens with this one. And I'll drag this around just to see what happens. And that's fine. So I'll just kind of connect that. And let's see what's going on with this one. And again, there's some weird thing going on. So I'm just going to hit delete and I'll drag this again. And that's fine. And I should be able to just kind of connect this. 
and I'm just overlapping it like that. And I'll zoom out now just so you can see what I did. Maybe you don't even like it. Maybe I don't like it. <laughs> and I'll kind of click off it, but that's all I did. I just kind of adjusted them a little bit. And you could do anything. You could, if you don't like this L being so high, you could pull it down. You know, I, I could I could go up here now. I'll zoom in and I'll move this Jeff thing out of the way if I can. And I could highlight these anchor points at the top. Oh wait, I have to go to my sub select. And then I'll highlight these and I'll just nudge them down. I'm just nudging the points down to about where the A is. I'll go up a little bit. And now I have the ability, I could still grab this text box with that tool. Now I have a little more room to put Jeff in here, if I want to. And now I have sort of a logo. Now it's really close to the other one, so let me move it away. And I'll move it down here. And now I have sort of a logo going on. Now maybe you don't like it, maybe whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll move this over a little bit because it's a little off-center. And now I'll move the Jeff over. And you want to look for alignment. You want to say, oh, I want to line up the J with the L there. And, and it lines up right on the L and T. So you want to look for alignment features if you can. And that's not too bad. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm crazy about, about this logo, but uh, I just wanted to show you some things about it. Actually, this one would look better probably where it dips in here because the E is a little bit lower because we have a little more of an opening. But um, considering what they started with, this this isn't too bad. Uh, I don't know if I'm crazy about this this little roof on here. Um, a half roof might be better. And, and now because we have these two shapes, it's a little harder. It'd be easier using that line version like we had up here. If you want it more flexible, you could use that line. These, remember, are closed shapes. But you don't have to worry about, you know, auto scaling or anything like that. They're fine like that. So this is something where, you know, maybe even this part, you know, picks up a color, uses that color, and then, you know, maybe it uses a dark version like that. You can have kind of a light you know, kind of monochromatic kind of logo going on here with the dark version of that brown, the light version, and then some black in here. I mean, this could even be that same color that we're using here. You know, it could be something like that. And you just have a, a light version of that. And then you have black down here. Or if you had to go with brown again, you could do that. So these are just some ideas that you can do uh, in Gravit. You know, Gravit's a very flexible program to be able to work with text, to be able to work with graphics, even to bring in bitmap graphics if you have to, to trace them. It's a really nice program, especially for free, I mean, to be able to do this stuff. And these can be saved as EPS files. They can be brought into Illustrator. So if you're ever in a situation where you're doing things and you're like, oh, now I have to bring it into Illustrator, you can bring this stuff into Illustrator. Anything that's converted to paths, you can bring into Illustrator. You could turn these all into paths and bring them into Illustrator if you want to. These are also fonts you could download too. Source Sans Pro, all these Google fonts. The Google fonts are all free. You can actually download them and use them locally on your computer. So you could use them in Illustrator or any other program that you might have if you want to. You just have to download them. It's not that hard to do. I could show you that if you ever need to know how to do that. But we do have them available online in Gravit since we're in an online class. That makes things a little easier. So, so here's my three logos here. And again, I'm not sure which one I like best. Uh, probably the middle one. And why do I like the middle one? Well, it's kind of unified. Everything's kind of together. Now, I could adjust the colors and try these brown colors in here. You know, this thing might look nice with that brown color. I think this is the brown color I was using. You know, that looks kind of nice. I could go here and and do that. Now, that's why I wasn't worried about colors until the end. I didn't want to worry about colors in the beginning. Now, that looks nice. That's not a bad-looking logo just for messing around with Roboto Slab and just moving things around, finding little nooks. And the idea is something should stand out, something should be secondary, which is what we talked about. But now it's kind of balanced. You know, this house balances off that. Uh, this stretches across the bottom. And, you know, it doesn't overpower the top part. It's more of an accent. So everything's working together here. This is a little more, you know, it's not bad, but it's, it's a little more less united. There's less unity going on. So it seems like there's something different here. This is different over here. You know, making this gray would help. Uh, it might not, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe if you highlighted both of these and you made them, let's see, they would be stroke color. So I, you know, if I made a brown or a beigey kind of color like that, you know, maybe that would look okay doing something like that. And then putting Jeff maybe in that color because maybe that's not as important. You know, if you did something like that. Now that's a little light, 
but that would kind of work. It looks a little more unified now, and, and this isn't bad down here. The roof is a little, you know, probably better without the roof, to be honest. <laughs> it probably looks better like that, uh, or, or putting Jeff over here might look better. But, you know, that's the idea. We're trying to narrow things down. We're trying to make things very unified. And I think everybody had at least one logo that was starting to work or just needed a little bit of work on it. So make sure you're revising your EX9 logos from my feedback videos. And then you take a look at this and you decide how you're going to finish up and, and really get your best logo forward so we could do a little more here with your logo and put them in some other situations other than just sitting on a, on a page. We'll try to do more with our logos uh, as we finish up our semester.